So hey there and welcome back to a potentially pointless installment of the call history series on my channel. And here's today's feature, the Zemus MT50. Now really I don't remember much of this phone but I suggest we try to find out together what this thing is all about. First things though, let's try to clean it a bit. So I just got a damp cloth here and let's see if I can uh, remove some of the dust and debris on it. Well it's mostly a scratch uh, glass cover so yeah it's in fairly good nick. It's not something extraordinarily impressive or well built for that matter. It's just a run-of-the-mill mid-ranger from the early 2000s, I believe. But I shall be checking uh, the specs uh, in a moment. Meanwhile, the construction. It is plastic fantastic all the way, though. I really do like the design and uh, really it's... Uh, holding out pretty well. <clears throat> it is a bit worn on the sides and on the top of the screen here, but not necessarily uh, catastrophically. It's got a few minor scratches, uh, though I'm fairly certain this phone has never seen a, the inside of a case of a holding pouch or stuff like this. Um, the back cover holds pretty well. It's not flexing too much. Now, right now it's flexing because it's missing a battery. But really, other than that, it's a good, handsome phone from the early 2000s. So here's the back. Let me try to zoom in so you can see the, um, the whole thing here. Yeah, so here it is. Notice that there is a lack of uh, screws uh, inside the Zima's technical area. That's because these phones were built by clipping into place. And that was a rather novel approach by Zima's, a very brave one, if I might uh, be permitted because those latches and I don't know what you call them um, hooks or grips uh, like this one they would lose uh, resistance in time the way plastic usually does when it gets older and the contacts between the battery and the SIM card were always a mess for Siemens phones of this era therefore they were not as um, sought after or as appraised as praised as Nokia phones. I think this is the reason why Siemens phones got the bad rap actually because the batteries used to lose contact points with the phone, also the SIM tray and really you would consider this to be a useless phone. It wasn't a, a huge fix or something like that. It was just a design flaw that well, simple as it might have been, it rendered the phone useless. Express on style cover covers on the fascia like Nokia's, but I don't remember what they were called on Siemens phones. Okay, so the plastic is a bit too brittle and I'm afraid that by forcing this, these two clamps uh, I will succeed, successfully remove the cover but also break the phone, so sorry about that, I'm not going to do it. Uh, as you might have noticed, this thing is missing a battery, though I shall apply a hack. I have my trusting uh, S55 phone. I don't know why I said trusting, because I've never actually used it, but and there we have it pointless YouTube banter and I shall apply the connectors from the battery in line with the connectors on the phone and this should work though with fairly um, limited and uh, disappointing results. 
because I'm not going to be able to scroll to the menu too much. As you can see, it's still working. It's got the menu, uh, well, exactly what I was saying. As soon as I move the phone, <laughs> the connectors misalign and uh, really I'm having a hard time starting this thing up. Yeah, there we have it. Okay, so I love this tone. Listen to this. <laughs> I'm going to break this phone. So it's got menu, it's in German. Uh, I can't really be bothered to uh, change the language. I don't think I'm able to without a SIM card. This is just a demo menu, not the full on uh, tree of um, options. Really, the blue tint on the screen was a bit novel and interesting, but not really, didn't really call, catch on. The choice for the answer uh, button on the middle is also, I don't know, it's a bit uh, cliche. It, it, it just tried to copy the Nokia 3310, which had this big navy pad thing that you used for everything from answering calls to um, um, accepting options in the menu. And I think Siemens tried to copy this. I don't really like the huge tall brow here, the forehead of the phone, if you will. And also the, I think the design, although Keeping in line with the original uh, Zima's theme, it's gotten a bit generic and, well, run-of-the-mill. It's nothing impressive. So this, I believe it was supposed to be a mid-tier competitor for the Nokia 5210. Um, but really, it didn't quite reach that status. It didn't fulfill its destiny, so to speak. It's got no camera, it's got no color screen, it's got none of the connections we are used today, naturally. It doesn't even have a 3.5 millimeter jack, though headphones were readily available from Siemens with a proprietary port and they were cheap as well. You could get them for about three to five euros equivalent or something like this. So no light speaker. It does have vibration and downloadable monophonic ringtones, which is a plus, I guess. SMS naturally and also EMS. And a WAP browser, clock, alarm, <laughs> games, and 20 languages, yay. It got Java and uh, predictive text input. Okay, sorry, this is not a full-on review, it's just a presentation of old tech, tech of yore. So really don't expect too much in terms of information. I don't really think anybody is even interested in this thing, but nonetheless, uh, it's a content, I, I, if I got it, I believe I got this thing for about three to two or four euros, something like this. I got it out of the flea market and really it just seemed like another thing to revisit. I'm not particularly fond of it, nor do I think it's valuable, which brings me to my next point. Will this thing be a collectible? No, I don't think it will ever be a collectible. Is it a conversation starter or worth having? No, not that either. Um, if you're a Siemens phone aficionado, I guess you could add it to your collection of all the Siemens models along the years because it might be interesting to put it next to the S55 right here. But other than that, um, it's not really worth mentioning. It's not like some sort of SL45 or SL55 where it's a, a beautiful marvel of a phone but it's also frail and flawed. 
This is just plain old, I don't know, bread and butter phone from the mid 2000s. Not really anything to stir your emotions. So I guess that's it for me. Um, and remember, I buy, own and collect useless um, tech stuff like this. So you don't have to. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Cut.